In this video from Mr. Long, we are looking at five access tips that can help you if you are a computer applications technology or CAT student. And this is for your database question. So let's see what tips I can give you for your final exams. The first tip I'm going to give you is actually quite a few tips regarding tables. And the first part is particularly it pertains to not just tables, but to all of the questions. Make sure in the exam paper that you take note of which table or which form or which report you are working in. And when you go to the access objects, make sure you go to the correct one. You don't want to be making changes to the wrong table. And then when they mark it, they don't find the changes that you've made. So make sure that you are working on the right table or form or report. Look at the name, make sure you're using the right object. Then the next tip I'm going to give you is when they give you these questions in tables, they tend to mention particular types of fields like item name, category, stock, and they ask you to change particular properties or attributes for that particular field. So make sure that you go to the correct field. And when you are on that field, then you can change that particular property. So for example, if we want to change item name, we go to item name and you can go change the field size of just item name. And then for stock, we want to go and change the validation rule just for the stock. So make sure that you are on the right field and that you are changing the correct property. Talking about combo boxes, let's see how do we make a combo box for so long. That's a little special case where if you go to design view, you want to go to the data type and then you're going to select from the options. You don't want to make it short text anymore. You want to go to the lookup Harry Potter, I mean wizard, and then this box will pop up and then you just follow the instructions. In this case, they want me to type in the values. You could have gotten it from a table or a query, but we want to type in the values and then we get a little box like this and we can specify which values we want to put into the combo box. And so that's how you make a combo box. Another tip for tables is they ask you to change the field to be in capital letters or maybe they'll say it's small letters. Now, where do we do this? Now, this is a very confusing question and this is to do with the format of the field. So when you go to item name, you'll see that the format at the moment is an at symbol and that means just display it as it is. However, if you want to make it into capital letters, you must change the format to a greater than symbol and that will change all the text into uppercase. And if you want to make it small letters, you could just make it a less than symbol and that'll change all the text into smaller letters. My next tip for you, the queries. Now there's a particular query that they love to ask and it looks something like this. They're going to ask you for the average of something. Maybe they'll ask for the sum, the min, the max, the count, maybe even the standard deviation for each category. So you want to have a calculation on each category. Sometimes they even give you a diagram and it looks something like this and you'll see there is no AVG of stock field, but there is a stock field. So there's almost like this AVG of has been added in front or there might be a sum of or a min of or a max of then you know you are dealing with a grouping question. Now, what does that mean? So when we go to our query, make sure that your fields are in the correct order. So we want to have it a category, then we want to have the stock, and then we're going to go to the top. You'll see on the ribbon, you'll see that there is a totals under query design. You want to click on that. And when you do, you'll notice that a new row has been added to your query, a total row. And you want it to be grouped by category. That's correct. However, you want the average of the stock. So you are going to go to that group bar operation option there under stock and change it to one of those options. Ah, there's the AVG or the average. That's what we want. And when you do that, that'll be correct. Now you want to group it by category and find the average stock. While we're on this question, let's go look at that part there with no decimal places. That's also very tricky because we forget a couple of tricks here. When you go to your stock field, you right click on it and you can go to the properties and you'll see something like this on the right hand side. Now we just tend to change the decimal places to zero because we want zero decimal places and we think that's enough. However, it's not. You need to also change the format, change it to fixed. You could even use currency as well. But in this case, we're obviously not dealing with currency. So change the format as well to either currency or fixed depending on your scenario. And if you do that, you'll notice that your query is grouped by category. And there you can see that it's displaying to zero decimal places. The next tip I'm going to give you is about forms. Now they often ask you to add a combo box or a list box for a particular field. In this case, for the category field. When they ask this, then we can go to the design view of our form. And then at the top, you'll notice the controls that are available to you. You can just move your mouse over them to find out which one is the one you're looking for. There we go. That's the combo box over there. And then I'm going to drag it onto my form. Now, the moment I drag it onto my form, then this combo box, Harry Potter, I mean, wizard will pop up. It's going to take me step by step through what I need to do. In this case, we just want to type in the values. Maybe you do want to get it from a table, 
but in this case we want to type in the values and then I get very similar to what we did with the comma box in the tables. We just fill in the values that we want and then I click on next. Now this is the step that students often forget. We don't know what to do so we leave it. If we leave it like this then what's going to happen is the category is going to see that it's unbound which means it's not going to be allocated to any particular field. But in the question they said we want to add a comma box for the category field which means we want to store it in a particular field and then we're going to move to this combo box over here and select which field we want to store it in. and in this case we want to store it in the category field and if we do that you'll notice that it won't be unbound it'll actually specify that it's saving this value in the category field so do not forget this step sometimes they will ask you to change a field to a combo box and if that's the case then you can just right click on the field go up to change to and select one of the options over there like combo box and that should activate the wizard however if the wizard doesn't come up and you don't know what to do my next suggestion will sneak your way around it is that you just go and cut that particular field out and then just go add it like we did in the first part of this tip the fourth tip is about reports. Now when you get a report, you can often be asked to display the average price for all items or they could ask you to display the average price for the DVD game and tablet items. Those are two very different questions. They're both asking for the average price. However, the first one is asking for all the items and the second one is for each individual category. Let's look at the all option first. If I want the average price for all the items, I'm going to have a report. I'm going to have all the data and at the bottom, I'll have the average price for everything. With the other option, we actually want just the DVDs, just the games, just the tablets. So we want to put the, the average for the DVDs over there. We're going to put the average for the games over there. And we're going to put the average for the tablets over there. For this one, we need to use grouping. So let's first look at the first option. To do this one for all the items, it's very simple. We're going to go to design view. You're going to go to the top and look for a particular text field. There it is. That's the text box field that we want. So that's where we put our formulas in. And I'm going to drag it into my report footer. Now, if you can't see your report footer, you can just click on the top there and drag it down just to give yourself some space and then I'm going to drag in my report footer a little box where I can type in the formula you'll see a label will be added that I can also change later and I'm going to type in the formula we start with an equal to sign and we want the average so that's the AVG formula and then in brackets I'm going to put the name of the field that we average it in this case we're going to put the price field it must be spelt exactly like it is in the database we can see it is spelt like that and I tend to use square brackets around my fields especially if they their spaces in the name and then we can change that label over there as well so what will this look like on the actual report there at the bottom you can see a nice little average it's just a once-off that's the average of all the items now what happens if I want to do a report based on each category the steps are exactly the same except we have to do two extra steps and the first step is to first group the data and then we're going to make the footer visible that's especially if you want to display it in the footer then we're going to add a text box like we did before and we're going to add the formula however this text box must be added in the group group footer. So the first thing we need to do is group it. At the bottom of your page you'll see something like this which says group sort in total. If you can't see this then just go to the top on your ribbon under report design you'll see there is group and sort. Click on that and then you'll see this box appear at the bottom. Click on add a group and then we want to group it by the category because we want DVD game and tablet. So once you do that it'll look something like this. So well done we have done the first step which is grouping the report. Now we need to make the footer visible. So I'm going to click on more over there and then I'm going to come over here to without a footer. Do you see it says without a footer but we want a footer. So I'm going to change that option to with a footer section and there we have done the second step and now we can do everything exactly like we did before. There you can see the category footer and inside there that's where we are going to put our formula. So we're going to drag our text box in the group footer. You could have actually put it in the, the category header as well but it's always nice to have it at the bottom. So in the category footer I'm going to drag my text box and it's exactly the same formula as what we had before equals average of the price and we change the label. We only have to do it once off, that's it. Just put it in the category footer and what it looks like is this. And there you'll see there is an average price and you'll see above it all the games are listed above it. So this is the grouping for the games and that's the average price of just the games. And then over here we've got another one. We only put in one but it will put it for each grouping and this one is the average price for just the tablets and that's how you do your grouping.
The last tip is for calculations, and this is particularly for the grade 12s. When you get a question for a query and it says there is a calculated field, these are the steps involved. You go to your query, and the key here is to make sure where are we going to put this calculated field. You put it in the field row right at the top, not the criteria, but in the field row you're going to put your calculated field. You start off with an equal to sign, and then the rest of your formula. In this case, they want 15% of the item price, so 15%, that's 15 divided by 100 of means to time something and then which field are we using we're using the price field again making sure that it's spelled correctly like it is in the database using square brackets if there are spaces particularly i can then go to my actual results i can run the query and it looks something like this and there you can see my calculated field however I'm not a big fan of that little label at the top there so i'm going to go back to design view and when you go back you'll notice it's added an xpr1 and a colon now i'm going to change that to VAT. Why? Because in the question, they asked me to call the calculated field VAT. So just before the colon, I'm going to put the VAT text. And then when I go back to my query and I run it, you'll see there is the calculated field with a very nice label attached to it. So let's recap these tips quickly. Tables, remember to work on the correct table or report that they're asking you to work on. Make sure that you click on the correct field and change its particular properties based on the question. Make sure that you use the lookup wizard if you want to change something to your combo box. And the format is what you need to change if you change it to the field to capital letters or small letters. With queries, remember the grouping query where you must go to the top and group it. And then you can add an aggregate function for each of those groupings. Remember when you are specifying a field, decimal places make sure that you change it to fixed or currency as well as the number of decimal places with forms we want to just change something to a combo box remember to drag the combo box field to the field and follow the steps in the wizard don't forget to add that part where you allocating the data from that combo box to the correct field with reports make sure that you know where you are putting your formula if it's for everything put it in the report footer. If it's for a particular group, then make a grouping first and then put it in the grouping footer. And then the calculations, remember you are putting it in the field row and you put an equal to sign and just type in your formula. And then when you go back to it, you can give it a nice name. And those are the tips for your exams. I hope they help and I hope you do well in your exams. Go to the playlist tab of our YouTube channel to go find other topics on access and HTML that can help you with your exams as well as other exam papers that can help you. Click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.